Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate simulation of three phase SPWM inverter in PSIM PowerSIM. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it so that you will be getting the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get into our topic for today. This is the PSIM model of a three phase SPWM inverter. At the first place, let us try to understand what are we trying to do with this circuit. We are using a DC supply and we are going to convert this into an AC signal. So, how do we do that? We are using SPWM technique. What is SPWM? SPWM stands for sinusoidal pulse width modulation. So you basically have a sinusoidal reference signal and you are comparing it with a carrier wave which is a triangular wave using comparators. The output that is produced will have pulse widths of different widths. So if you observe if you are using a gating block in PSIM, the widths of the pulses will be same throughout. It will be constant, so square wave. But here the width of the pulses will be different based on the requirement of the switches. It will be producing the uh, pulse width. So that is why we will be uh, using this particular technique and it is popularly used all across the industries nowadays. So we are not going with the conventional inverters in most of the cases. We always prefer SPWM inverter. So once basic understanding of what SPWM technique is understood, let us go to PCM and start our simulation over there. Alright, here we are in PSIM. At the first place, we will be requiring a DC voltage source. So, that is basically used as our supply. We can use MOSFET or IGBTs for uh, inverter simulation. The reason is very simple. If you are using a thyristor, we need an external commutation circuit to turn them off. And that is why we don't prefer that. So, I will be using um, IGBTs over here. And I will be connecting this in a form of a bridge uh, according to the circuit diagram. So, once this is done, I'll be giving it to the DC supply in this particular fashion and uh, the other end will be given to this point. So uh, the bridge formation is done. Now we will be using um, a load which is basically of three phase in nature because we are using uh, converting DC to AC. However, the output voltage or the current will be in three phase. So you can uh, go to power and you can go to RLC branches and you can see there is a block called as RL3 that means it is a, a RL load which is basically three phase and that is how it is designated. Uh, I'll be connecting this between uh, this point and I'll be connecting. So if you carefully observe there are additional nodes that are formed. So be very careful with respect to the connections is concerned. So I'll be connecting it to this point. Let us take tapping from this point in this particular fashion and give it over here. Again, I'll be connecting it in the middle point over here and uh, over here for the next phase. So I'll be shorting these three terminals. You can double click up that and uh, set the values. I'll be using uh, 10 ohm and uh, an inductor of 10 milli Henry. So these are values for each and every branch that is there. So it will overall accept the same value for each and every branch that is there. So once that is done, now I will be requiring a sinusoidal source. So you can place them in this particular fashion. I will be requiring three of them. And uh, I, you can also use three phase source as well. But I am using three single phase source. Just for the sake of convenience, the circuit looks much better. And that's why I am using that. I will be requiring three comparators. And I will be requiring uh, a carrier wave. One carrier wave is more than enough. Because the same carrier wave will be used in comparison for all the other circuits as well. So I will be connecting this uh, with respect to ground. And I will be giving it to the negative terminals in this particular fashion. So once that is done. I will be giving the positive terminals to the positive uh, positive terminals to the sinusoidal blocks, respective single phase sinusoidal blocks. And uh, once that is done, now let us enter the value of uh, the sinusoidal signals. So it does not require any phase delay over here. Change the peak amplitude to 0.8. So once that is done, do it for the other blocks as well. Change it to 0.8. Now we need to give minus 120 degree phase. As you know that A, B, C or R, Y, B, the nature of uh, the signals that you are considering. So it should be 120 degree phase shift with respect to each other, isn't it? And that is why I will be changing it to uh, minus 120 and minus 240 over here. So enter minus 240 here. Let the frequency remain the same. So once that is done, double click on this and uh, let the carrier uh, frequency be the same. You can change it for different values and cross check as well. Let the peak to peak voltage also be the same. So basically the signal of 5000 Hertz uh, or 5000 5 kilohertz will be compared with 50 Hertz. And based on that, you will be getting the pattern of the pulses at the output terminals. Now I will be requiring uh, these blocks. So this is called as on off controller. So you, if you carefully observe uh, over here, it is written as on off controller. Why do we need this? Uh, 
so whenever there is a pulse like pulses are basically a square wave isn't it whenever it is zero it will sense that it is in zero state and it will give to the mosfet it will inform the mosfet that the signal is zero whenever it is in one it will inform the mosfet that it is in one state and that is why it is used so pcm has specifically designed this tool in order to activate the mosfet so you can uh, use the use them based on your requirement but we definitely need this if you don't use this uh, it will be throwing you an error while simulation like uh, the power circuit is not being isolated with the control circuit some some sort of error like that you will be getting so be very careful with respect to it again i'll be requiring a couple of them uh, next to each other let us place it again over here in this particular fashion i'll be requiring three not gates so the reason being is uh, in one of the upper legs for example if you consider i'll be directly connecting and for the lower leg i will be requiring a not gate so that uh, both the uh, MOSFETs do not conduct at the same time so if you're inverting that there is no chance that these two will be conducting at the same time uh, interval of time and that protects the circuit otherwise the source will be short circuited and again it will lead to damage of the source if you are practically uh, implementing a hardware model of it so now i'll be connecting this uh, at this point i'll be connecting this at this point and i'll be connecting this at this point and they should be connected to this they should be connected at this and they should be connected here and one more thing you cannot connect this before the not gate and give not gate directly to the terminal it always wants on off controller just before it so be very careful with respect to it otherwise it will throw you in another another error while simulating so that is very important to keep a note of now i'll be connecting this uh, to the first mosfet this to the second mosfet this to the first mosfet of the second leg and this to this point and this to this point over here and again over here so we have connected all the blocks with respect to the circuit and we have entered the parameters as well let the supply uh, of the dc voltage be 100 volt itself so we're not going to make any changes with respect to it let us ensure that the current flags are one let us see the current waveform and that will clearly give you what type of waveform or the output terminals are now we need one important block which is basically simulation controller so let us set the total time to be equal to 0.1 seconds so these are static loads if you're going for dynamic loads like motor loads then you have to set it for five seconds the reason why we need this is to control the time duration of the simulation so that is one of the most important reasons why we need simulation control as the name itself indicates it gives us the control of the simulation process i hope this so please make one change um, i made a mistake over here so it should come before the not gate so otherwise both the signals will be from the not gate so connect it at this point and connect this at this point connect this at this point now let us click on run simulation and check the output waveform so i'll be uh, looking for all the output currents and if you see you're getting all of them in respective phase difference of 120 degree with respect to each other so this is exactly the nature of output current waveform that we are supposed to get and this clarifies that we are getting an ac waveform however you're having some harmonics you can uh, do various uh, harmonic reductions uh, using various techniques like selective harmonic elimination techniques and all those things so we are getting a pure sine wave uh, almost a pure sine wave in this particular fashion so this is uh, exactly what our nature of output waveform should look like i hope you were able to simulate a three phase uh, spwm based inverter in pcm in case you have any questions feel free reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video please do keep supporting thank you